at this event 20 years ago, Ted Turner made an unprecedented commitment to donate $1 billion to UN causes. At the time, audience members seated where you are today asked one another, did he say $1 billion? Was that what a B? Later that evening, I had a chance to speak with Ted on Larry King Live on CNN, which he founded. We talked about his remarkable gift. In true Ted fashion, he stressed the fact that his gift was driven by an overwhelming desire to leave the world a better place than where he found it. He said to me, I'm no poorer than I was nine months ago, and the world is much better off. Little we to know that on that very day, he would not only change the course of the United Nations, but the lives of millions of people around the world who would ultimately benefit from his generous donation. With that gift, Ted also changed the future of philanthropy. We have now seen many other individuals follow his leadership, make bold commitments to philanthropy and global issues. Please welcome to the stage United Nations Foundation founder and chairman, Ted Turner, and the United Nations Foundation president and CEO, Kathy Calvin. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm a bit overwhelmed tonight, anybody would be. It's been great and I love it all. Ted, was this the best investment you ever made? Yes, it was the best investment I ever made, sure it was. All right, would you do it again if you could? I would. I would too. Thank you for um, all of us, we appreciate it. Okay. Please welcome to the stage singer, songwriter, and record producer, Ellie Goulding. on the floor it's in crazy getting longer till the lights out music's on i'm waking up we start the fire and we burn it up and it's over now we got the love there's no sleeping now when the lights started out they all know what they heard it's like the match made now giving love to the world we'll be right Shining up 
to the sky Cause we got the fire, fire, fire Yeah, we got the fire, fire, fire And we're gonna let it burn, burn, burn We're gonna let it burn, 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 burn We're gonna let it burn, 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 yeah Ellie has used her unique platform to make the case for action on the threat of climate change. Her activism reminds us all that we must use our own platforms, big or small, to speak up for what we believe and what we know is right. Please join me in welcoming back to the stage tonight's 2017 New Voices Award recipient, Ellie Golding. Um, I'm so delighted to receive the New Voices Award. Um, thank you so much to the UN Foundation for this huge honor. Um, I'm, I'm also excited that I'll soon join the UN family as a good ambassador for um, the environment. Um, these opportunities... <laughs> thank you. Oh, that's good. Um, these, these opportunities um, will allow me to use my platform and reach to amplify the efforts of those working really hard and decisively to shape a positive future on our beautiful planet. Um, I'm, I'm an Earth optimist, um, which is not about putting on rose-tinted glasses or pretending we're not pushing the planet to the brink. Um, we can all see that happening. Um, but I do believe in people and their ability to change. So I want to create um, that need to change from a place of inspiration, not from desperation. From new, renewable energy uh, beating coal to the first globally agreed goals for sustainable development, um, there are some amazing stories and opportunities to be shared. Um, but our ability to usher in major change also rests on our ability to understand how dependent we are on each other. As the environmentalist Paul Hawking, who I absolutely love, um, describes it so beautifully, we are vastly interconnected and our fates are inseparable. And so my dream, <laughs> as I stand before you, is to help inspire curiosity, learning, love, and a deep sense of responsibility for our planet and our future. Thank you. Good evening. I want to thank the United Nations Foundation and Ted Turner for this great recognition. I also congratulate the other award winners. It's an honour to be recognised as part of this phenomenal group. And we applaud the work they're all doing to make a positive difference to the world. At Mars, we're grateful for our partnership with the United Nations and the United Nations Foundation. You've helped us to do and be better. And I humbly thank you for recognizing us with this great award. In business, we spend a great deal of time competing. It is often how we're judged, measured, and portrayed. But there are times and there are issues where that is simply the wrong narrative. On the most pressing matters facing the world, the narrative and imperative needs to be about cooperation, collaboration, and supporting each other in a collective race to the top. 
because we know that alone we will fail, but together we can, we must, and we will succeed. Thank you. We've seen the, we've seen the horrors of slavery and trafficking around the world. We've met with victims firsthand. What we hope is going to happen is that the world community is going to get behind this effort, mm -hmm. bringing all those efforts together. We've seen so many disjuncted but really good efforts that are underway, but pull people together using best practices to end modern slavery, much like the world has attempted to do with HIV. Right. Um, thank you. It's been such a privilege for us to be involved in this and to work with so many people who spend every day and night uh, focused on this issue. It truly is a scourge on humanity. Yes. And uh, I thank you for recognizing the effort. I just happen to uh, have an office that allows me to, to really herald this, so thank you. D-miners are often the first workers to arrive in areas of conflict. And because an essential part of the United Nations Mine Action Service's work is also about helping landmine victims rehabilitate their bodies as well as their communities, they are often the last to leave. In fact, in some places they never leave. In Cyprus, we are seeing second generation D-miners. Young people who've learned this humanitarian work from their parents and who are now using it to save a new generation of lives. But it is so much more than saving lives. It is changing them entirely. When someone is taught by UNMAS to really understand the dangers he or she faces and how to go from being afraid of a mine to learning how to destroy it, they experience a completely different quality of life. Deminers, they don't just save others' lives. They empower people to save their own. Mines are invisible to those in their path. But Agnes works tirelessly to remind the world that the threat mustn't be invisible to us. On behalf of myself and a grateful world, please join me in proudly honoring Agnes Markayu and humbly recognizing her incredible team from UNMAS. to introduce a leader who has not only stood up for our shared humanity, he has dedicated his life to it. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres took office in January as the ninth leader of the United Nations at a time of challenge and consequences for the world, at a time when his experience and leadership were called on like never before. In his earliest days, Antonio Guterres was a teacher who opened up new horizons for his students. As the Prime Minister of Portugal, he served his country's citizens and negotiated on the world stage. And as chief of the UN Refugee Agency for 10 years, he proved himself to be a humanitarian who knew how to get things done and a relentless advocate for the most vulnerable. Ladies and gentlemen, it's for me an enormous pleasure and an enormous honor to be with all of you today. A few years ago, I was High Commissioner for Refugees. We met, and Desiders was extremely concerned with the situation of his community in Syria, the Ismaili community living in Salamiya at the risk of being overrun by the Islamic State at any moment. And he massively invested in support to his community but not only to his community. Salamiya became an example in a, in a Syrian country ravaged by war and by sectarian divides. Salamiya became the example where Ismailis, Sunnis, and Christians were living together, sharing everything with the, the fantastic support and the leadership of his Highness. This is the example the world needs today. With the vision 
and the generosity of Ted Turner, with the wisdom, the tolerance and compassion of His Highness the Aga Khan, I think we can win the battle for a better world. Thank you very much. It is now my honor to present the final award of the evening, the Global Challenge Award to the recipient and my friend, His Highness, the Aga Khan. <clears throat> I have known His Highness for many years. In that time, I have come to appreciate his tireless dedication to improving the lives of people everywhere, and I mean lives of all people. As a global leader, he continuously demonstrates that what unites us is far greater than what divides us. Indeed, this year marks his diamond jubilee, 60 years of service as Imam of the Ismaili community and founder of the Aga Khan Foundation Development Network. 60 years of service and leadership of a global organization. How extraordinary, 10 years at the helm of the United Nations was challenging enough for me. <laughs> so let's give him a hand for 60 years. His Highness has guided the network, network's activity in the realms of education, health, humanitarian assistance, economic development, and culture. But perhaps the most important aspect of his work is that on pluralism, which I see as one of the most urgent challenges of the modern days of our time, and I'm sure most of you would agree. His Highness recognized that Wyatt's identity has become the driving force of many modern conflicts. Diversity should be championed as enriching and strengthening force for society. The world, especially in these difficult times, needs people of vision and goodwill like the Aga Khan. He is a living example that there is no inevitable contradiction between religion and democracy that pluralism and diversity is possible, and that interaction of cultures enriches and, power, and empowers humanity. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming and congratulating His Highness the Aga Khan. President of the General Assembly, Miroslav Lajcek, Secretary General Antonio Guterres, Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed, former Secretary General Kofi Annan, the many permanent representatives in attendance, ladies and gentlemen. 
Thank you so very much, Kofi Annan, for your generous words of introduction. There is no person alive today who has made a greater contribution to world peace than you. And thanks are due to you from all around the world. It is a pleasure for me to share this beautiful evening with all of you. And what a special honor it is to be receiving from the United Nations Foundation its Champion of Change Award. I must say also that it is a very humbling experience, especially as I look around this room at so many people who have truly been outstanding champions of change in so many fields of endeavor, including the others being honored tonight. I am indeed humbled to be in their presence. I have come to know about the United Nations Foundation through our admired friend, Kofi Annan, who has been one of our educators in chief in spreading the good word about the UN Foundation, of which he is an extremely devoted and effective board member. I'm also an enthusiastic supporter of the UN Foundation for another reason. What has caught my attention for many years is how closely its philosophy about global development actually parallels our own. The words that leap out of its mission statements include terms like linking and connecting, not only with the United Nations itself, but with a host of other organizations. Some of these are private, some are governmental, and some are private but not for profit. I refer to this third category of institutions as civil society, by which I mean essentially private organizations that are fundamentally devoted to public purposes. For a long time, political debate all around the world focused on the competing merits of government action versus private enterprise. My conviction, which has been deepened through the years, is that these are false alternatives. And that is the central message I would emphasize in these brief remarks tonight. The question is not which sector can be most effective in the march towards progress. The central question is how these sectors can best become effective partners in the quest. The concept of public-private partnerships has been one of the keys to the best work of our agencies in many fields and many countries around the world in the last 60 years since I became the Imam of the Ismaili Muslim community. The public-private partnership formula alone, however, is incomplete unless we also insert the words civil society. The partnerships that will most dramatically change the world are those in which all three components, private, public, and civil society institutions, can connect one with the other in an all-embracing common effort. When that happens, other concepts emphasized by the UN Foundation also come alive. I've been impressed, for example, by the innovative terminology the Foundation uses in expressing its goals. Like these three dynamic words, catalyzing, multiplier, and effects. Think about it. The notion of catalyzing multiplier effects reflects a similar dynamic to what I refer to as trampoline projects for development. These projects are best practice examples of balanced partnerships between governments, private entities, and civil society, threaded together by innovative thinking, 
intelligent structures and clear lines of communication. Well-defined goals and responsibilities are essential, as is the buy-in of the target constituency. Such projects offer the potential for long-range impacts, which go well beyond immediate short-term results. This goal is, to be candid, sometimes easier to talk about than to accomplish. But one of the great global models of how best to pursue this aim has been the United Nations Foundation. Another central part of our Aga Khan Development Network's approach is one that we also share with the United Nations Foundation, an emphasis on what we call countries of opportunity. The issue is to do what we must to set them alive by creating and sustaining an enabling environment. And fundamental to all of this, of course, is a basic philosophical commitment which is expressed by another important word, and that word is pluralism. This is a frame of mind which regards diversity, multiplicity, and indeed difference itself, not as a burden, nor a threat, but as a gift, a gift of the divine an opportunity to learn rather than a danger to be avoided. So it is with all these thoughts in mind that I say again how proud I am to be here to accept your award, recognizing how it reinforces not only the important words, but also the useful concepts and indeed the central values that we all of us hold in common. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Highness, your vision, your passion, your commitment to pluralism and inclusion are more needed than ever. Congratulations again on your diamond jubilee. We are so proud to be part of it.